Hello there, welcome to my little quick start guide on how to use your Hackaday Bus Pirate device. I've just received mine through the post today, um, unpacked it, had a few interesting experiences trying to set it up and I'd like to share those with people. Um, it's kind of a quick start guide on how to do it. Um, first of all, you need to point your driver towards ftdichip.com and this is the page here. Click the drivers button, click the VCP button. This is a unified driver for all the Windows operating systems. This will be a Windows demo, by the way. Um, in fact, it's going to be a Windows XP demo. Um, one thing about Windows XP over Vista is that it comes with a serial program. Um, Vista, you have to download Hyperterminal. Um, so go ahead and drive that. Download the 20416 driver. I've already saved it to a location. And you also need to right click it and extract it. And you create these INF files. These are what Windows looks for when it installs drivers. You can now go ahead and plug the bus pirate in. Um, I bought mine with a USB cable. It's like a mini USB to big USB cable. If I just look at the device manager, you'll see a few extra devices appear. What you'll notice, you have two devices present. Uh, Windows may very well prompt you to install drivers for both devices. Um, you, you notice you've got a USB serial converter in the US, USB controller section. And in your port section, you have a USB serial port. Uh, note down the COM port number that it's actually living on, it's COM4. Um, this, for all intents and purposes, is a good installation of the uh, system. Um, when I started off, um, some of the devices showed up as not correct for some reason. I had to kind of give Windows a bit of a shake to be able to uh, properly take the FTDI drivers for some reason. Um, you may not have to, it depends on mileage. Next thing to, to do is to test the bus pirate out properly. Just do start and run. And you can just type in hyperterminal. It's hyper TRM. It's already on the screen there. On a fresh installation of, of Windows, if you've never fired up hyperterminal before on Windows, um, it will ask you for some area code information. You can just fill it in with rubbish. It, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Um, and just proceed on. And then just type in any information at all for a new connection click OK. Now here you need to remember that COM port that the bus pirate appeared on. Windows does present multiple COM ports to the system so make sure you choose the correct one that showed up in the device manager. Here's one of the caveats that I encountered. Um, first of all difficult to find these initial settings. I had to dig pretty deep on the uh, Hackaday website to find these as it goes. Um, Spent a bit of time trying to find these, so hopefully save other people some problems. This needs to be set to 115200, 8 for data bits, no parity, one stop bit, and hyperterminal defaults to hardware flow control. This will present you basically with a non functioning device completely, it will not work. You can use either X on or X off, or none at all. It's probably best to use none, but Hackaday do actually say that, you sh that some devices may require the X on X off settings. But for now, we'll just leave it to none. Do OK. Now, you notice nothing actually appears. You do have to press Enter to kick it into life. Um, that's it. Syntax error type question mark for help. High Z mode. High Z is, is the mode that it starts off in, and that means just high impedance mode. Um, press question mark. And these are all the options. This means that the PIC chip is responding and the FTDI chip is responding just fine. You'll notice on your bus pirate there are three LEDs. Um, the power one should start off be lit. The mode and VREG one should be unlit to start off with and that's a normal state. I was a little bit worried that the VREG uh, wasn't actually on. It turns out that you do have to switch it on and we'll do that now. First things first, we need to put it in a mode other than high Z. High Z, is, high Z mode is essentially off. It's, it's not doing anything. So you press M to change it to anything else, 4 for instance. Just put it into I2C mode and your little mode light will go green. It's lit up. Now to switch on the onboard voltage regulator to test that, capital W and then press enter. Power supply is on and the VREG LED will light up for you. Okay, so we're just going to test out some of the functionality of the bus pirate and we'll use the simplest uh, option which is the voltage probe tester. This uses two of the pins on the bus pirate and we're going to need to refer to the Hackaday website for this information. First of all find your hardware revision 
um, most people will probably have the Seed Studio provided hardware V2Go model, which is the top left one. Once you've found your um, particular version, go to the pin location diagrams V2Go, in my case. And this is the diagram for your particular device. And for this test, the voltage probe test, we need two pins, the ADC pin and the plus 5V pin. And we're going to be using these handy little devices to hook around these two pins. On the other end of these are some crocodile clips we're going to connect up to a potentiometer to measure the voltage. So go ahead and connect up the voltage probe pins to the top right one, the ADC pin, and the second one down on the left which is the plus 5V one. Make sure your orientations are correct. If you go back to your terminal screen, now all we need to do is to connect the bus pirate up to the middle wiper pin of your potentiometer. Any one of the crocodile clips will do. And you can also, you can use any one of the left or right um, wiper edge connector points on the potentiometer as well. To connect to any, uh, any one of the remaining pins on the potentiometer. Now, all you need to do is press D. See it's saying a voltage probe of 1.4 volts. We turn the potentiometer all the way to the left, so it's applied the maximum re resistance to down from 5 volts down to 1.4 volts. Turn the potentiometer all the way to the right, that should be the minimum, the least resistance, and that's 4.9 volts. And that makes sense because the plus 5V pin is what we provided it with, so it's only knocked off a, li a little amount. Put it halfway, press D again, you get 3 volts. A little bit down, 2.3 volts. As you can see, it's fully analog. It's, it's using the ADC input. All the way up, down a little bit, 4.1. And that has tested out some of the basic functionality of the bus pirate. Thank you for